You're listening to the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 43 of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Journey to Japan. That's right. This week's episode is all about coming to Japan, making your way from wherever you are in the world to Japan. And this is an episode that's kind of dedicated to all of those out there who are not in Japan、uh, right now but are big fans of Japan.、They're, you're people who want to come here. You want to come here to travel, to see the sights. Um, maybe you want to come to Kyoto and see the, the sites at Kinkakuji, Kimizudera. Maybe you're someone who's interested in visiting you know, Hakata and Fukuoka. Maybe you're interested in seeing the, the, the bright lights in the, the big city of Tokyo. You want to go to the、uh, Shibuya Scramble. You want to go to Harajuku Bridge and you know, all those kind of iconic places. You, know, you want to go to the Sapporo Yuki Matsuri, whatever it may be. Or maybe you want to come and live here.、Uh, a lot of people who've contacted me over the years, who contact me on a regular basis, live in places like the UK, Australia, New Zealand,、uh, you know, Sweden, Germany, Canada, America,、uh, Argentina, Peru, you name it. People contact me,、um, people who want to come to Japan to live. They want to come here, they want to work, they want to live. They want to... Some people even say they want to come here and spend the rest of their days, which. You know, if you've never been here, it's kind of hard to make a statement like that,、um, you know, with any kind of.、Uh, well, I mean, basically, if you've never been to a place, it's, it's, you know, not maybe the most honest thing to yourself to think that this could be the place for you for the rest of your life. But hey, you know, who am I to judge?、Um, it is a great place to live. And this episode is kind of about that. This is a, an episode about, you know, someone who. Who really wanted to come to Japan for a long time, worked extremely hard to achieve their goal, and then made it here. And now they live and work here in Japan. So, th- this evening I'll be interviewing、uh, Josh Hill, known on YouTube as J Hill Life. And,、uh, you know, Josh, I've never met Josh personally, but we've had a kind of an online、um, relationship for, for many years.、Um, years ago, when he was a student in England, he used to contact me on a regular basis. Just you know, touching base, saying hello.、Um, he used to make videos about you know, how much he wanted to come to Japan. And at one point, he did a, a series of videos where he, he interviewed,、uh, he did kind of like pro- profiles on various J vloggers. So I thought it would be really interesting to have Josh on to talk about his experiences, to find out kind of what first got him interested in Japan and Japanese culture, why he decided he wanted to come here. And then, kind of talk about his journey here, how he focused on getting to Japan and, and how he made it here successfully. And again, now he lives in Tokyo,、um, where he seems to be having a really good time, enjoying life.、Um, and he's, he's a big part of the YouTube community up in, in the Tokyo area, in the Kanto. So, yeah, so that's this evening's interview. We'll be talking to Josh a little later on. So, like last week, I, I just want to remind you that, of course, the Just Japan podcast is a free podcast. It's a labor of love for me.、Um, you know, and I, there's a way that you can, if, if the show gives you something,、um, you, you like it, you want to support the show, you can do that over on patreon.com. I've had a Patreon page for quite some time.、Um, and、uh, yeah, you can go over there, patreon.com slash Busan Kevin. The link's in the show notes at Busan Kevin.com. You can go over anything helps. You want to donate a dollar, you want to donate anything more, that's cool. Um, again,、uh, this, is, this podcast is not monetized in any way.、Um, you know, it's, just, it's a labor of love for me, but it's a time consuming labor,、uh, labor of love. And、uh, you know, I put a lot of effort into it. I want to make a good product for you guys. I want it to be something that you really enjoy. So if you, you, know, if you don't want to support the show in that, in that way, don't worry. The show is still going to be coming at you. You can always support the show simply by just sharing it with your friends, by you know, posting links on your Facebook and your Twitter, on your Google, other social media. You know, spots out there on the webs、um, that, that, that supports the show as well. But, you know, again, that option is always there. So check it out, my Patreon page. The link is in the show notes at busankevin.com under episode number 43.
So, of course, the, uh, the Boost on Kevin, well, that's my YouTube handle, uh, me on YouTube. So if you don't know, I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Boost on Kevin, uh, also youtube.com slash Jalen Kev. But, um, of course, the Just Japan podcast is available, of course, on iTunes, and that's really the best way to get the latest episodes and updates is by subscribing on iTunes. You can also listen to us on Stitcher Internet Radio. Uh, those links are in the show notes. Uh, the latest episodes that you will always find in the show notes, you'll find uh, a, a SoundCloud uh, version of the, the most recent episodes um, at boostonkevin.com. So go check all those out. Um, you know, some great ways to listen to the show uh, to catch up on the latest things that are going on with the Just Japan podcast. <laughs> So the winter holidays are approaching. They're soon upon us, and in my case, they're really going to be upon me soon. Um, by the time you're listening to this, I'm probably just about to start my winter vacation, which is great. This year, I'll have almost a month winter vacation. I'm really enjoying that. It's a time to refresh, to get some more sleep, recharge the batteries, spend some quality time with my family, and honestly put out some good content here on the Just Japan podcast, and of course, on YouTube. Um, many of you know me from my YouTube life. That's kind of where I've, I've, I'm, I'm best known in, in the world of social media. But the podcast is, of course, something that I'm hoping will be bigger and bigger in time. And I'm hoping, you know, in the next, you know, few months or year or so, people will know me more from my podcast than anything else. But um, the winter holiday is approaching. I'm going to be in Japan this holiday. Uh, last year, I went back to Canada with my son. At the time, he was three just the two of us flew back to Canada. Uh, my daughter at the time was a very young infant, as infants tend to be young. She was an infant, therefore she was a young infant. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was just financially, it was just a bit too much for us to handle to have the entire family fly back to Canada. Um, also, the fact that, you know, we kind of justified it by saying, hey, you know, it was really expensive, but, it's, you know, it would have been extremely difficult to travel with an infant to Canada in the middle of the winter. And honestly, she was too young to be aware of anything that was going on around her to have formed any memories, you know, so or understood what was happening. So we figured, you know, hey, just my son, my son had a, has a relationship with with my parents and he understands what Canada is. He had been there before and really enjoyed it when he was um, almost two years old. And uh, so, it was, yeah, it was a good time. A great time. Uh, but this year we're going to be staying here in Japan. Uh, you know, it's going to be a great Christmas. So the, the thing is, you know, if you're if you're a single person, a single foreigner living in Japan, and you've got uh, an affinity towards the winter holidays, Christmas, it definitely is a time of year when you can get homesick. And I think of my years as a single guy living in South Korea, very far away from home in Canada. I I often was desperately homesick during the holiday season. Um, and maybe that's just because, you know, the holiday season was such a special time for my family and in my household growing up. So now, fast forward, 2014, uh, I'm now a father. I've got two kids, got a great wife. Um, we, we do Christmas here. And, you know, we've got a Christmas tree decorated with lights. We're going to have gifts and presents. I've got a turkey I got from Costco, a large turkey breast uh, from Costco. So we're going to have, um, you know, I've got my parents had sent me uh, gravy mix. So we're going to have, you know, turkey with mashed potatoes and gravy. And I'm going to make, you know, dressing or stuffing and all the, the vegetable fixings. So, you know, we're going to have the, 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 the Christmas DVDs, the TV shows that I grew up watching, uh, playing on the TV. We're going to have Christmas music. Hey, you know, it's, it's basically, you know, Christmas is what you make it. The holidays are what you make it. Um, great times are what you make them. So, you know, here it's, it's going to be a wonderful time because I'll be here for the holidays in Japan, far away from home. Um, no, the thing is too, guys, I've lived away from home for a long time, but Hey, I still get homesick. And that's one thing. Um, Steve Miller, uh, host of the Asia news podcast, sorry, the Asia news weekly podcast, um, had me on an episode of his podcast one time talking about, uh, foreigners who are very, patriotic, um, very loyal to their own country. And I'm that way. I'm a very proud Canadian who loves Canada very, very much. So I do, you know, although I've been living abroad for a long time, I still miss my country desperately. Um, 
well, okay, maybe not desperately, but I miss it. <laughs> uh, I was I was getting caught up in the moment there, folks. But I mean, you know, I miss it. It's always great to be home for the holidays, uh, you know, and be with my family. Uh, honestly, that's the most important part, being with my mom and my dad and being around my brother and his family and my my grandmother and, and stuff. But again, it's not a possibility this year. So we're going to make a wonderful holiday season right here in Japan. Um, and, you know, I, I plan on doing a lot of other things. This is kind of my last hurrah before graduate school begins. I made a video about this on YouTube uh, earlier in the week. Whereas, and I, basically, this is my last chance to kind of relax and, and, and try to put up a bunch of content before grad school begins. So I'll be a graduate student, part-time graduate student, as of January. And how much time that's going to take me every evening, I don't know. But it's definitely going to take up a, a good, pretty much probably all my free time every evening. So uh, the priority will be to to do my grad school work, of course, and then get this podcast out each week because it's so awesome and, and, and fun to do. So um, I'm hoping to get out a few times hiking if I can, ideally. Mm. Uh, maybe once by myself, do a nice big long hike and then get my son out on, out into the mountains, into the forest at least once or twice. And I'm looking forward to, um, over the holidays, uh, an old friend of mine from Korea, my days in Korea, my first couple of years living in Korea. So I know he, you know, he still lives in Korea and uh, he's planning on visiting Japan. Uh, Osaka, he's got some friends in Osaka, and he's going to come to Kobe for the day, him and his friends, and we are going to do a tour of the Nada Sake Breweries. And Kobe is famous for its sake production, so it's it's a Nihonshu rice wine production, and there's a district in Kobe called Nada, Nadaku, which has uh, many sake breweries, and you can basically do like walking tours. Um, you know, make sure you have some good walking shoes. Not a pretty neighborhood, very industrial, you know, the factories. But all of the breweries have very nice museums, which are free to enter, no admission fee, and you can come and look around. And then they all they all have really nice gift shops, um, and they often have free samples, so you can get a free sample or two, and then you can, you can buy some of the delicious sake that is sold. Um, so there's a lot of, a lot of big ones around, like uh, Hakatsuru, uh, smaller ones like Swan no Tsuru. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's 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 a sake place. So we're going to do a big sake brewery tour. So that should be a lot of fun. And then a big bloody headache the following day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, folks. So like I mentioned earlier on in the episode <clears throat> this evening, the topic is uh, you're making your way to Japan, journeying to Japan. And this is an episode that is really for all of those out there who really love Japan. They're, they're fascinated with Japanese culture, uh, the history, the fashion, whatever it may be. You're into Japan and you want to come to Japan, <clears throat> but you're not in Japan yet. You want to travel here, you want to live here. Um, so this is one person's story and there's, you know, there's a, there's a million ways to come to Japan. There's as many reasons, as many ways to come to Japan as there are reasons why people are interested in Japan. Um, you know, people come here because they're really into anime. People come here because they're really into figurines. <laughs> people come here because they're really into the culture. People come here because they're really into studying martial arts. Um, maybe they're in America or in the UK. They're really into Aikido or Karate. Um, they study Judo and they want to come here and, and study it like where in, in the, the place of origin, the birthplace of that, you know, martial art or sport. Um, you know, some people come here because, hey, they're into Japanese women or men. Uh, some people come here just accidentally, you know. Um, but, you know, th so so tonight I'm going to be um, talking to uh, Josh Hill. He was kind enough to take the time to sit down with us here at the Joseph Pan Podcast. And, again, he is on YouTube known as J Hill Life, and he is a, a regular vlogger, a video blogger uh, on YouTube, He's based out of Tokyo. He's from the UK. And again, the reason why I decided to talk to him or I asked him to, to come on to the podcast is because, again, I, I've kind of had this online relationship with Josh for many years. And uh, I remember when he was just starting starting his post-secondary studies in, in the UK and he was interested in Japan and coming here. And he really took the time to form relationships with a lot of current or, you know video bloggers, J vloggers who are already here in Japan. And he became a, a J vlogger who had not been in Japan, uh, who was living abroad. And he worked really hard, and now he's here. 
He made it to Japan, and now he's living and working. And, you know, for many of you out there, he's living the dream. He, he's doing it. So uh, here we go. It's time to sit down and talk to uh, Josh Hill, a.k.a. J. Hill Life, about making your way to Japan. <laughs> Okay, everyone, so welcome to episode number 43 of the Just Japan podcast, Journey to Japan. And this evening, I've invited on a special guest, someone who's got a, who's got a really great story. I know a lot of you out there who are listening to the Just Japan podcast are interested in Japan. Obviously, you wouldn't be listening, but you're interested in coming to Japan, maybe to travel or to work, to live. And tonight, I'm talking to someone who was interested in Japan for quite a while, and uh, they they wanted to come to Japan, and, and well, he made it happen. Um, so I want to welcome uh, Josh Josh Hill to the Just Japan podcast. Hello there, hello. Great, and and now Josh, um, I want first of all, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on to the podcast this evening. Uh, no problem, mate. I'm I'm happy to do it. Actually, excellent. Now Josh is. Um, He's someone who's in Japan not such a long time no, um, compared no, to, to some sure. of the, the old dogs like myself or some of the people <laughs> on, on YouTube who, um, you know, who, who have been on pa- previous episodes, people like Victor and Molly. And mm. actually, you know what? I'm a babe in the woods compared to Victor and Molly when it comes to Japan. Oh, uh, yeah. But um, yeah, so, so Josh, could you maybe tell us a little bit about um, you know, who you are, where you're from, and you know, where you live in Japan, and a little bit about your YouTube Presence. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there's no problem. Um, well, obviously, my name's Josh, and um, I'm from England. I'm actually from Manchester in England, um, which obviously most people know from football. Of course. Um, not a fan myself, honestly. Don't like football. But um, yeah, no, I always, uh, I always wanted to come to Japan when I was younger, and, uh, and I live in Tokyo right now, although that wasn't where I, I, I originally lived. I lived in Saitama. Okay. Um, but... Uh, anyone who's lived in Saitama for more than three months will tell you it's pretty, it's pretty slow living there. So I had to get out and uh, get to the big city. I was like a babe, like you. I was like babe. I needed to, uh, need to make my way to the big city, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, I, I actually, um, Kevin, you'll know. Like I started a YouTube channel ages ago. Yeah, that's one, right. That's right. Really long time ago because. Um, I remember one day uh, Victor made a video and he was like, everyone should make videos about Japan, you know, in his typical Victor channel uh, 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 way. And um, I made one video, really bad video in my my living room, just like, I like Japan. And then um, I started to uh, to just, you know, talk to the people in the YouTube community, the J vloggers, and you guys kind of were nice and paid attention to me. And then uh, when I finally got over here, my videos started to take off a little bit more and um, yeah, I, I make videos that are more comedy, I guess, than um, a lot of people want me to do, you know, stuff about Japan, but I, I tend more towards comedy and or travel. That's another thing I do is like, you can do this for very little amounts of money because I'm a very cheap person and I won't go anywhere for less than a thousand yen, basically. So, um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that's that's my channel. It's uh, it's comedy and then travel, and also I do one series that's running, and it will continue to run, which is where I teach foreign people real English or what I call real English, which is all the slang and uh, swear words that exist in the English language, which okay. I like. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, as as Josh had mentioned, he he kind of he had a little channel a long time ago. Um, I first met Josh online wow what three or four years ago we were actually i i would honestly probably guess it may have even been longer than it that. may have even been longer it was quite a long time ago and i remember um you were and i and i've given this advice to people before who who the people who want to get into youtube and and be noticed um they say how do i you know i i say there's a lot of ways to get a hold to to get somewhere one thing you shouldn't do is just like email people and say pimp me out Show me out, show me out. Yeah. You you didn't do that. You did it like the proper way. You actually took the time to slowly build relationships with people. Yeah, I uh, I, I basically, and this is what I tell people because a lot of people ask me like, how do I get friends? Because I'm friends with like, you know, Charlotte in Japan and 
uh, Mime and, and you and, and Victor and stuff. And they're like, how do I get friends with the J-Vloggers? I'm like, start a Twitter and then bother them every day. Bingo, like bingo. I, did. Um, I literally I started a Twitter and I had 100 followers, one of which was you and one of which was Mully. And um, and find me in Kurame actually. Find me in Kurame. He was he was one of the first people to find me actually. Mm. And um, and I I just basically tweeted at you every day like can't wait to meet you guys in Japan. And uh, no, and you guys were nice enough to actually you know send me a tweet back every now and then and be like can't wait to meet you either, dude. And well, yeah, was... yeah, that's I mean that's it right there. And like and I, like you know there's two names that are popping into my brain right now, for example. And these are two guys who are going to be listening to this episode, and they're not YouTubers. But when I think yeah. about this kind of relationship, they're two guys who are just kind of seem to be big fans of all the stuff I do. There's a guy named uh, Nicholas who lives in Arizona in the United States, and there's a guy named Peter um, who lives in Australia, and um, he's from Brisbane actually. And what stand out about them is that they just seem to comment on everything I do. But it's, they make really interesting comments. And they often ask yeah. me really interesting questions. And it's, it's not even kind of like uh, these kind of big, what's a really cool place to go? What's that? Like, it's kind of like, are you able to buy mustard in Japan? Yeah. And like these kind of like, you can tell like they're, they're very interested in Japan. And they really just want to know everything about it. Yeah, and they're asking me like every day these interesting questions. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I'm glad you know you take the time to ask me that. And I, you know, we get the questions every day. Like, how do I get to Japan? Yeah. Um, how do I get a job? Can you give me a job? Um, <laughs> yeah, I love that one. I'm like, no, because I don't own a school. Yeah, um, I, I love that one when I get it, and I'm like, I've only been here a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. How do I get a visa? Well, what kind of visa? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Actually, that's that's the first thing you replied to me about was I sent you a question that was really mundane, that in my mind was really mundane, but it was, can I get British cereal in Japan? <clears throat> and you replied to it, I remember. Oh. Because I said, I, I don't like... I, I said I, I was like really picky with eating, mm. and although I like sushi and I like Japanese food, I, I I'm very particular about breakfast foods. And I it was a really long message that I emailed you actually, <laughs> and uh, and it was basically just like, can I get cereal or at least good sausages in Japan? And you were like, yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, you I, they've got Weetabix at my local supermarket now. Yeah, they've um, got a they've got well they've got Kellogg's you know Kellogg's stuff here, so I, I buy that. Here. No good sausages. Mm, no, 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 they no. don't exist. I go on the meat guy for that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, okay, so so you, I, you've already asked, um, uh, you've already kind of answered uh, a question that I was thinking of. How long have you been in Japan? You said about a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, um, I'm actually coming up on my year and nine month anniversary. So soon, two years. Awesome. I just put in my. Uh, I'm actually changing my visa over. And um, uh, switching visas, okay. And uh, I just put my application in for that today, uh, okay. literally this morning. So I'm, I'm a bit jazzed about that. I'm kind of, uh, kind of excited. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. Um, now, okay. So you've already talked. You know, you've already obviously the people who are listening to this can mm. they're aware of the fact that you've been interested in Japan for some time. When mm. when did you first start? becoming interested in japan maybe not necessarily coming to japan but just yeah. kind of aware of japanese culture or when when did you yeah when did the the uh when was the interest kindled it, okay so um for this 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 is this question is it, it's going to have a bit of a, an, an elongated answer i'm sorry no I'm no problem hey this is a, long, a bit this, of a tangent this is a long form podcast okay You've got all the time you need sir Oh, lovely. So, okay. So, um, in the past, my family and me have traveled a good chunk of the world. So, um, my dad, uh, his job, he used to be a, a, a marketing manager of the Commonwealth Games in England, wow. uh, which is, you know, it's, it, it requires a lot of travel. And, um, and so, we would travel a lot. And also, my mom and dad used to think that uh, they still do, that if you travel, uh, you're far more likely to gain mass amounts of knowledge than uh, if you just sit in a school for the, the rest of your life, right? So um, we used to travel a lot and a lot and a lot. And there was two places that uh, we, we would never go. And I, I, I still to this day don't know why we never went there. And that was Australia and Asia. Um, and so we covered most of Europe. We covered America and all of that. And uh, one day when I was, I was quite young, I said to my dad, I was like, I want to go to Egypt. And we went to Egypt um, for my birthday. And I was about 13 uh, at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was 13. Uh, and we went to Egypt. And then 
uh, around about 15, I was like, why do we, why have we never been to Asia? And my dad, you know, my, my dad paused and he was like, why haven't we ever been to Asia? Like, it's the deepest rooted history in the world. Um, you know, some of the greatest stories and, 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 and architecture, because I, I love architecture. My dad loves architecture. Mm. Um, and, uh, and so we, we actually decided to go to China okay. first, yeah. first. And, um, and what, and what happened was <laughs> we, when we were deciding to go to China, my dad talked to his friend and his friend was like, don't, don't go to China. It, it, don't, it's not a good idea. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dissing on China. I think China's a really cool place to go. Um, but I then at that point, and I was 15 at this time, right? Okay. Yeah. At that point I watched I randomly clicked on a YouTube video and my dad, uh, so I randomly clicked on a YouTube video at the same time that my dad was having this conversation with his friend on the phone, uh, trying to find out how to get to China or what to do in China. Okay. Uh, and this YouTube clip was by a YouTuber called Akita Tom. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I remember Akita Tom. Yeah. Yeah. He who was, was, like a, he, was a, he was a foreign exchange student. A, it was a British, British, uh, British exchange. Australian. Uh, Australian. Okay. He was like in a, he was like a high school exchange student, I believe. Right. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was, so he was, was actually like this blonde haired, blue eyed guy in a Japanese high school. It is with his uh, glasses on and that. Yeah. And it was, it was just titled my first day in Japan. And it was a video. It was a long form vlog. Okay. That, was him setting off from uh, wherever he's from in Australia. <laughs> Sorry to him, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, getting on the plane and coming over to Japan and him landing in Tokyo and then arriving in Akita mm. um, and meeting his host family. And then I just was like, wow, that's cool. That's a cool idea. And I'd never seen a vlog before, you know. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I Back then I was watching all the stupid videos on YouTube. And... Um, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. And then I saw that there was a whole series. Like it was, a, it was basically like a reality TV show for his life, right? Mm, yeah, I guess that's a good way of putting it for sure, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so I, wa I watched more and more and more. And I was like, wow, this place that this guy lives is so cool. Like Japan is so weirdly cool, right? Mm. And of course I'd seen anime and stuff, but it never really piqued my interest to like go to the place where anime had been created. Um. And I was just like, these people are really nice. Like their lifestyle is really chill. And I'm, I'm, I, I, I very much, I don't like, uh, you know, I don't like um, the noisiness of like London and stuff. Like I like Tokyo because it's a chilled city, even though it's quite fast paced. Is it really a chilled city? You find? Yeah, I, I find it chill. I mean, I, I've never lived there. I mean, I've been there several times. But... Yeah, I mean, it, it depends like how you live your life. If you're a salary man, no, it's not going to be chilled. But here, yeah. the, the way I live my life, it's pretty chill. Um, yeah, if you're a salary man down here in Kobe, life isn't chill. I suppose it's a... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you, you just got to take you, you know you got to take the good with the bad, no matter what you do. You know. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I try and chill as much as possible when I'm here. Um, and then I said to my dad, I was like, dad, I don't want to go to China. I want to go to Japan. I want to see where this guy lives. I want to see this place. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's what piqued my interest. And in. my dad was like, Oh, Japan, we're going to have to save a lot of money for that. So we postponed the trip, but, um, yeah, I just started watching Akita Tom and then Tokyo Kuni and, mm. Uh, all of these YouTubers, but then I started like I'm obsessed with books. I spent a lot of my time in the library when I was younger. Okay, uh, and I, I went into the library and just took out as many books on Japan and feudal Japan and Edo period Japan as I could. Okay, and ju I just like read every single one of them. It was crazy. Yeah, and that really piqued my interest to want to come here. Um, so and so also just my interest about Japan and stuff like that as well. Yeah. So so I guess really, I mean, it sounds like Akita Tom. The videos of Akita Tom were. Yeah. I sh thank him. I should really meet him and shake his hand. So thank you very much. He um he actually he had a really big following too. Yeah, um, he did. He was like when I when I first watched his videos, I remember I was like, wow, this guy's videos are really cool. I hope he has lots of subscribers, and he had like sixty thousand. And, 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 like, and that was oh. like pre monetization too. Yeah. Yeah. That was before you could even make any money on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then that was it. I mean, like he, hmm. he he doesn't. I mean, it was just his time here, and then that was it. I mean, I I remember coming across him. And he was not really what you call part of the. He wasn't part of the J Vlog community. No, um, I, I think he specifically said that in one of his videos. He didn't want to be part of yeah, it. Yeah, he just he did his own thing. Um, yeah. 
And I think I think what I found so interesting about him is, I mean, his perspective was so different. Um, you had, you know, most of the J vloggers at the time, even though there weren't so many, were were older. I mean, there were adults who were working. Yeah. Um, the kind of working life, teaching, how to get a job. He was a student, like he was a high school kid living and going to a Japanese, uh, uh, an Australian high school kid going to a Japanese high school. That was yeah, like, and and that's why I liked it because it was like. You know, because obviously I was the same age as this guy. Mm. Um, and it was basically like, hey, remember all those animes you watched where it was like a, a, a random new foreigner appears in a Japanese high school? Well, this is happening in real life. Yeah. And this is my life about it. And it was pretty cool. I liked it. So, yeah. And I kind of secretly wished that I could have gone on an exchange program to Japan. But unfortunately, it doesn't, didn't as, get offered in Manchester. As, as do I. But where I went to high school... It wasn't offered either, and yeah. uh, that that was kind of an opportunity that maybe that only a very wealthy kid could have had. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, where I come from, like, I grew up in a small a small town in eastern Canada, and you know, hey, uh, no, nice. Um, yeah, so I mean, and it's interesting because when you you mentioned, of course, you know, Tokyo Kuni, of course, he was he was actually the first J vlogger I ever watched. Um, that was be before there was ever a term J vlogger. Yeah, um, didn't he? I'm pretty sure, like, didn't he and like Tokyo uh, and Victor like coined the term. Um, well, there was, you know what? To, to be honest, the, at the time, from my recollection, the, the kind of I know Victor has mentioned in the past. Um, and if you guys don't, uh, you're not sure who we're talking about. This is we're talking about. Um, uh, Victor is a very big YouTuber. If you don't already know, uh, he goes by Give Me a Flake Man or Give Me a Break Man. He was actually on episode 41 of the podcast where we talked about opening a school in Japan. So he was on two episodes ago. It's a great episode. You should yeah. listen to that one. I like that one. <laughs> and if you want to open up school, you know, listen listen to that episode. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, the the first ones I came across back in two th early 2006 were um, Victor. But at the time, honestly, Victor didn't vlog about Japan. Mm. He was just vlogging about stuff and uh, YouTube drama mostly. <clears throat> and, and it had nothing to do with Japan at all. Um, he'd be in a room in Japan, but he wasn't he wasn't like outside doing vlog vlogs. He wasn't walking around showing Japan. He was like in a room like ranting about people who did something and said something about another person. And he's kind of come back to those roots. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but I mean, but it was but now now it's Japan centric, whereas in before right. it wasn't. Um, but I, I think in those days, YouTube was very, YouTube in general was very small. Yeah. So um, the YouTube. It, it they, scares me to think that this was so long ago now. Well, they talk about that YouTube community. How, yeah. Like, how, like, you know, like all these guys knew each other, guys like, like Phil DeFranco and Shay Carl, and there there weren't very many of them, and they all mm. knew each other. Um, and it's like, that's why everyone's like, like I, I wonder why all the YouTubers know each other. It's like, because there was only like seven of them. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, there were too many. Um, and Tokyo Kuni and Softy Papa, they were some yeah. of the first. And uh, there were some others who were gone now. But um, so, yeah, okay. So um, you're in Japan now. Mm. And, and um, I'm curious, at what point, so now, you know, you've, you've talked about, you know, getting that kind of initial interest in Japan. The you saw the Ikitatan videos. You said, hey, dad, I want to go to Japan. When did you first decide that I want to live in Japan? I can, right, I can paint a picture for you right now, Kevin. I'm, I could do this. Time to be an artist, sir. Yeah. Paint this so, picture for us. So, okay, so uh, 18, that's when the, the, the trip happened, you know, the, okay. the, the trip that we postponed. So 18, it's my 18th birthday. We arrive 7th of July, so it's the day after my birthday. Uh, and we're here in Tokyo for two days. We have the JR pass, so we can, you know, we can take the train as an unlimited amount of times we want. Okay. And halfway through the trip, and I'm not going to lie, it was a really grueling trip because I didn't realize what 78% humidity is like. Um, and I'm from, <laughs> yeah, I'm from Manchester, which if you, if you've ever been to Manchester, the hottest it gets is, uh, is about 20 degrees Celsius. That's, that's, I think that's probably about a, a relatively on the same kind of latitude line of latitude as where I'm from. I'm from, exactly. Nova, I'm from Eastern Canada, Nova Scotia. Yeah. Yeah. Like a hot summer day. It was like 23. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 With, and, with zero uh, humidity. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, it's just dry all the time or mm. raining. You know, there's no, there's no in between. Yeah, that and, sounds um, like my house. That sounds like where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. 
And um, that's why a lot of people are like, wow, Manchester sounds really cold. I'm like, yeah, it's on level with Canada. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we were at, we arrived. It was a really grueling trip and I was, I was kind of enjoying it. But at the same time, the, the weather was beating me down. And I was like, I really, I'm, I'm not having as much fun as I thought I would. Um, and then we got to a place called Kanazawa, which is in northern, to- uh, northern Japan. It's above Tokyo. Okay. So if you go past Gunma, it's mm-hmm. there. Um, and we're there, and that's a very old town. There's a whole section of it, which is just like the samurai villages and stuff. Okay. And I remember walking, and we, we walked to this tiny little bus that I was too tall to get on. Um, and I had to literally stand on it, and my head was tilted to the side. And we got off, and we got in a park. We walked around the park, and um, we sat, and we were in a tea room, and a, a woman in full, you know, kimono came out and served us tea, and we had unagi with rice, um, which was which was awesome. And then I literally, like, in my head, it did this weird little switch, and I was like, I never want to, I never want to go home because of this. Like, I I want to have this every day. Mm. Um, and from that that point in the holiday, from there on. Everything I was looking at, I was looking at it as if I was already living in Japan. Okay. Uh, and I was like, I could come here, I could do this, I could see this, all of these things I could have every day, and you know, and obviously it's not entirely true because you know different areas serve different things and whatever. But it was, it was, it was this flick, this this thing, this one little thing, this woman serving me tea on a lakeside in a little tea room, eating rice with eel, you know. Mm-hmm that just made me like think wow no i really want to live here mm. like I, there there is i don't care how i don't care how much money i'll be earning here what i'll be doing i just want to have this every day mm. and then yeah no it just stuck in my head and i literally said to my dad i was like dad do you think i could move here and my dad was like i don't know maybe and i was like cuz i i want to mm. uh, and my dad was like you know, you, you you probably have to work at it, and then you know that's what sparked the you know the inspiration to want to move out here. Yeah, I, I mean, I I totally understand. I didn't I didn't have that kind of experience that you did. I had never, um, I mean, I'd visited here before I lived here, but that was because mm-hmm. I was working in Korea. Yeah, and I would have to come to Japan on visa runs. Right, and the one thing that always got me, and I heard from other teachers who were based in Korea. Would go, I would I would come over to Japan for a weekend to get a mm-hmm. visa, and I would think, "Damn, I don't want to go back to Korea." Yeah. Damn, this is awesome here. <laughs> it's it, it's it's cleaner, you know. The just there's something different about this, and it, it, it it's damn cool. Yeah. Um, but I mean, even I, I think about like yesterday morning, I threw my DSLR camera into my backpack, and I was cycling to work. And uh, I drove past, and I, I drive past this sake brewery every day in Kobe. And there's this artisan's shop. They have a, this artisan who builds uh, sake casks, wow. kind of like a hooper almost. <laughs> and I drive by this every morning, early in the morning, and these casks are all outside, and it just smells amazing. You can smell the wood. And then they. He takes apart the old casks, so they're soaked with the the nihon shu, yeah. and the smell is just in the air. And I, you know, they're put together with I don't know kind of wood and bamboo, and then just past, right around the corner from that, there's this little tiny shrine that's been there for age and memoriam. I don't know how long. And mm. I just got off my bike and I just turned on the camera and started filming, and it was just like, damn, like this is just something I see when I'm on my way home, from, my way to work. Mm. You know, that's a, that's a, that's another thing. It was the, like, you know, there's a, it was all these like small crazy things that eventually built up to that switch. You know, mm-hmm. like, it, but that's the thing. It's like there there is something. It's an uh, it, I find it help, amazingly hard to describe to people. Like, because a lot of people ask, like, why did you want to come to Japan? And there are lots of reasons, but there's it's amazingly hard to describe that feeling of wow. I you know this. There's these things I can just see, you know, there's mm. like, I can like with you, the art, artisan stuff, you would never see that in Manchester in England. You know, you're not going to see an artisan making a, a wooden barrel like out on the street or anything like that. You're never, definitely not going to see a temple. 
you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, I mean, you'll see a church, but then you'll also see, like, three drunken men sat outside it uh, way into their 50s that shouldn't be there, you know? <laughs> like, um, and, like, also, like, the pleasantry of people. Like, often uh, people ask me what it's like living in England, and uh, especially for people like me, um, who are, you know, quite shy or whatever, it can feel quite oppressive in Manchester, you know? It's okay. a, a very, you know, people there are very loud and uh, often... Uh, quite aggressive I think in the way I mean, that it's all. Even as a Canadian, I know of, I'm familiar with the kind of reputation of Manchester as being kind of a, a tough city. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, it's, you know, it's got this, it's got this reputation of the fact that there are two cities within, you know, earshot of Manchester, which is Liverpool and Salford. And, the, the you know, there's the, the, the whole thing of like football rivalries mm. and uh, gang fights and stuff. And that's kind of the history of Manchester, which is kind of disappointing, really, because Manchester is quite a nice city in itself. But um, yeah, I, I, some of the people and the and the situations you can get yourself into in Manchester are quite scary. Uh, whereas in Japan, I always feel I, I just felt safe here also. Mm. And uh, and that's why I guess in my head, I was like, I could live here. You know, I, I, I don't feel weird being here, you know? Mm. So it was, it was lots and lots and lots of different things, but definitely that that one little thing, that switch, that's what. Okay, cool. Well, wow. well, I mean, I, that sounds like this, it was like this kind of magic moment where it yeah. just, all the pieces fell into place, and you're like, "Dang, this is where yeah, I want to be." Exactly. It was like I got the right piece of the puzzle at the right time, kind of thing. Nice, nice. Now, so okay, so when you're interested, okay, you've decided I want to move to Japan. I want to live in Japan. So, what kind of options were there? Now, you know, like you, you and your father discussed. Your father said you're probably gonna have to work at yeah. it. You're gonna probably gonna have to work at it to get there. And obviously, when you get there, you're probably gonna have to work. Yeah. Um, so, what what kind of job options or what kind of uh, methods of getting here popped out first? Or what what, what, okay. did you, what did you kind of focus on in order to get here as okay. far as work? Um, well, the first thing I, I, I tried to look up was because obviously the, the, the first person I watched about YouTube was uh, Akita Tom. Uh, the first thing I tried to look up was if my university had an exchange program. Okay. Um, because I was, already, I was already set to go to university. I already had my degree set up, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, video game design, oh. um, which is what I have a degree in. Um, but I, I, I have a diploma in electronic game design. Nice, awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's, we can have a discussion about game design. On, we, we can uh, do another episode about that. Yeah. Exactly. Let's do that. Um, so yeah, and I wanted to maybe minor in um, Japanese because I thought that would be you know a good idea. Mm. Um, and then I wanted to see if my my school had a an exchange program for that. Turns out they did, but only for Japanese majors. And I wasn't going to change my major just so I could come here for a, a year, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I apologize to any of your American listeners who can't understand my accent as well. Like, I, <laughs> I, I say year very weird, and there are certain words like call and cool. I can't. I'm hey, sorry. Well, you know, for, for, for the lovely American listeners out there, <clears throat> who I, I, I'm, I'm so thankful that they listen. This is a very international podcast. Uh, <laughs> last week's episode, we had uh, an Australian an Australian contributor doing interviews. Uh, we have we have American. We have we have uh, fr I had a, I've, I've had a French guest on before. Hey, you know. Everyone's everyone's got an accent. Let's just uh... <laughs> and, uh, so so basically too. Also, yeah. If 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 you do come to Japan uh, as a foreigner, there's a good chance you're going to be working with people from many 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 different countries. Oh so, yeah, yeah so, definitely. Uh, it's a good time for you to get your listening skills and and and, and understand a, an English accent. <laughs> yeah, I've well, I've had to work with people who've uh, you know from um, like Kurdistan and stuff who have got you know English Kurdish accents. It's very difficult. Um, but um, yeah, no. So, so uh, I I tried to look that up, and that didn't really come to any sort of end point. And and then I kind of left the whole studying thing, and I was like, okay, well, I'll get my studies out of the way, and then I'll try and go to Japan after that because I knew that you need a degree to to get here, basically. Yeah. Uh, no matter what you want to do, uh, and you need a degree in anything. <laughs> that is an important thing to mention to people. That has come up in many many episodes. Yeah, having a university degree is often very key in getting a any kind of working visa yeah. in Japan. It's it's key to getting a working visa pretty much anywhere. Now. Well, in any country, yeah, yeah, true, yeah. true, true. Uh, although it's not it's not the key. Like there are exceptions. I do know people here who haven't got 
degrees and have got working visas. Yeah, well, yeah. There are people who come who have spousal visas. There are people that work on entertainment visas. Yeah, um, uh, bankers sometimes because bankers don't usually have degrees. They can come over and work in banks and stuff. Mm. Um, there's a whole lot of things, but that's not what I'm going to talk about because I don't really know the ins and outs. Neither do I. <laughs> yeah, um, and so I I started watching. You know, obviously the how do I get to Japan and going on. Oh, I remember you uh, you made a video about this, which was like stay away from forums. Um, it was ages ago. It was like stay off of like uh, the stay away from forum trolls and stuff like that. Because uh, like I I was I was dumb once, and I posted on a forum like, how do I get to Japan? What do I do? And they just pounced on you. Oh, they destroyed me like yeah. really quickly. Like the first response I got was, why don't you try booking a plane ticket? You know, I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, that, it's it's that's the reason why. For example, I had Anthony Joe on for one episode. Anthony Joe yeah. is the editor of uh, GaijinPot dot com, yeah. and he even said they did away with the GaijinPot forums when he uh, worked there because uh, it was just too hard to manage, too much negativity, um, out of control, and I mean, a lot of angry people on that. Just a lot of angry people. It's it's kind of like the uh, the Japan Today comment section. Yeah, <laughs> when you, when you and, go to the uh, Japan today and you read the comments, far more entertaining than any story that could be on that website. Oh yeah, m most definitely. Even like even now, like Rocket News and stuff, I've oh, got yeah. like the, those comments are just just awful. They're just angry people who are too uh, too too chicken shit to actually like make a video blog or oh, make, yeah, make their own blog. I mean, I've got I've got those comments as well. Like some of those comments that I get, I just I, I like I just laugh. I'm I'm so happy to get them because like I'm like, well, you gave me a view. <laughs> yeah, and, and and also like you know, I always used to say that there's a reason why we have the block and delete buttons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like uh, sometimes I just egg them on. I'm just like, oh yeah, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I I posted on forums and all of that nonsense. But mainly what I I did was I went on to. Um, I think it was called About Japan. And uh, and they basically were like, the easiest way for you to get here, depending on like your skill set, is to teach English. Mm. Um, which everybody's answer is, you know, no, no matter who you ask, like everyone says, just teach English and then you can find your own, you know, job later down the line if you want to change jobs. Mm. Um, and right. so that's what that's what I decided to do. I said, you know, I said to my family and my friends, I was like, you know, I want to I want to go out there and. Maybe not forever, but I want to go and experience Japan and teach English in Japan and uh, see what it's like and just live there. And uh, and then I was and obviously the family were quite disappointed that I didn't do anything with my uh, my game design degree. But I was like, well, if I I can try and find a job in game design in Japan, you know. And and never say never. I mean, yeah, exactly. You're, you're that's, young. That's, you just finished your your degree. I mean, uh, yeah, I only finished it like last year, so. Yeah, I mean, like myself, I I actually have a I went to uni for four years. I got a BA, yeah. And then I realized with a BA, I can't really do anything. Yeah. Because I had no specific training in any topic, so I went back to school for two years to a technical college, and I I got a two year diploma in electronic game design, uh, focusing on three D graphics. Nice. And I I was actually recruited by a company before I graduated, and I worked for in game development for a little while. I was a three D Studio Max weenie oh 3ds max yeah that's what it was that was like back in the late 90s early 2000s and then um i decided i wanted to go to korea for a year to teach just to mm. travel uh one year turned into five years i met right. my japanese wife in korea nice and uh went back to school got my teaching degree in canada became a real quote-unquote teacher elementary school teacher <laughs> um and now you know now i'm in japan but uh, ironically enough uh, in January next month, I start my master's in education in information technology. Wow! And I'm actually going to be moving back into kind of a, becoming an instructional designer and tra training instructional designers, and will probably end up back in Canada teaching game design students or instructional design students. That's that's crazy. That's kind of uh, what like a, a it's a like weird a circle, it's dude. a weird circle I'm going through right now. I'm going in. Yeah, yeah. That's that's crazy. Yeah, no, that's awesome though, because like yeah, you know, uh, I don't want to rush ahead with questions or anything, but you know, the, Japan is in itself quite transient. So, um, well, Japan it, Japan is a place where, for example, in my situation, I I never yeah. did plan to come here. Yeah, exactly. But I met I met a woman, I met a Japanese woman, and I fell in love. But now now I've got a family, so my yeah. my foot's always going to be here. Now just 
with the education I'm getting, going to be getting, there will be much more lucrative opportunities for me abroad, right? Back back in my home country. <clears throat> but obviously, I'm always going to, and I've, I've said this in some video blogs. I'm going to always have my foot here, and my my wife has family here. My my children have a set of grandparents here. So it's going to be the kind of thing where this it, it may be the thing where we move back to Canada, but we come back here every year for vacations, or my kids will then come back to here to spend time going to a Japanese school or whatever it may be, mm. you know. But it's uh, Japan's in the blood now. Yeah, it's awesome though. Like, it's no, a good no, thing no, to... no, no, I'm not saying it's bad. It's not a bad thing. Definitely a good thing. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, that's that's you know, it's it's it's. It's kind of it's kind of weird when it comes to options, right? I I'm gonna say I could have done much more research. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, because I basically heard, you know, teach English, and then that was it. Like that, my I, I, my research stopped there, basically. Yeah. Uh, and if I'd done more research, I probably could have found um, more job opportunities for me, um, because the, uh, you know, since coming here, I found that there are, there are like you know dispatch companies for um journalism and uh video game like video game journalism and uh video videographers for uh like events and stuff and they all get uh visas to work here because of it well this is a thing though like <clears throat> now when you think about that okay what you're just saying right now you're learning about this yeah and also kind of jumping back to what you said kind of at the beginning of the the, the the podcast, you mentioned that now you're friends with people like Sharla in Japan or yeah. uh, you know, all these different YouTubers. So you've you you've built a network and that's what it's all about networking, right? Yeah. So now that you're here, you're on the ground, boots on the ground, and you're meeting all these people, I think all of a sudden you're gonna find maybe, you know, and when you're someone who's like you, you're I mean you're 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 making the videos, you're doing this and that. I think you're going to start learning. You, you've, I'm sure you already have been learning about new opportunities that you never knew about or thought about or dreamed about. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, um, again, not, not jumping the gun, but uh, the, the new opportunity is, like I said to you before, just put in my application today to change my visa, um, is that I'm going to language school. I'm going to go and learn Japanese. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, because I've realized, you know, like, uh, like I just I I want to do that. That's the next part of my journey is that I want to, you know, I want to learn Japanese. I want to be proficient in Japanese. Like I'm okay right now, but I'm I want to be proficient. You know. Well, that's going to open up a lot of, of a lot more opportunities for you. Exactly. Likewise, I mean, just like even for example through this podcast. So this is going to be episode number forty three. In episode number forty, I interviewed uh, Jenny Silver. Okay. Who, who is a voice a professional voice actor. Yeah, a narrator in Japan, and that's you know how she makes her living. Um, and she was saying to me, even like during the podcast, like Kevin, you've got a great voice. When I listen to the podcast, it sounds so good. You should actually be thinking about doing narration work. You could easily find narration work and voice acting work. And I thought to myself, Hey, I've never thought about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Like, I was like, Whoa, wait, really? I could. She's like, Absolutely, you could. I'm like, Huh? It's it's those it's those random little like people like, it, not little people <laughs> the random people like giving you these little hints that then you know open your mind to new things and allow you into new things like i didn't even know that language schools existed until i made friends with Shala and sandra well that's how that's how, like uh, uh, uh michaela i mean that was her thing that's what she was doing here michaela and you know obviously you know a big 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 youtuber big youtuber and i mean her whole thing is i remember back in the day when she was i mean she came here when she was a high school student and never left yeah. basically um she's got a whole she's got a she's got more courage than a lot of people i think i mean the, the fact that she came here as a high school student and basically never left yeah but, she, she literally did what akita tom did but never left <laughs> yeah so exactly exactly and i remember seeing her videos years ago she's she's been on youtube for a long time before she became big and yeah um you know made a made a living doing it um but again she did she was a language that's how she got her visa I mean, mm. I don't think she doesn't have a degree, but she she was here as a language student, had that visa, and now, I mean, I'm sure she has probably, probably like an entertainment visa or whatever it may be. Mm. I don't know, um, but yeah, she's she's another one of those great story, very interesting, unique kind of stories, and how exactly. she got here, you know. Um, I love I love those unique stories as well. I like hearing people's you know 
different things. And well, that's that's one of the great things about that. Like, and I, I mean, hey, you know, the listeners are out there, like saying, hey, you know, we listen to this podcast, we like it anyway. So I know you guys. I, so I'm not really tooting my own horn in a way. I'm, on to- <laughs> I'm actually I'm not tooting my horn. I'm tooting other people's horns, I suppose, and not in a vulgar way. Um, it's it's like some of the guests I've had on this podcast have been amazing. Like I I I, I interviewed a, a researcher who works for the like the National Research Institute. Um, he's oh, he's wow. from France. Um, he works for Recon. Um, mm. You know, episode number I think was it eleven, and and then he was on again later on. But I uh, I interviewed uh, um, Mai Tu Yen from Twitter. He, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was a, he was he was a crime scene investigator. He worked for the L.A. Coroner's office, and he he's here now. He teaches uh, he teaches basically how to be a CSI person. He teaches at a university. He teaches like crime scene. Oh my scene. god, that's crazy. He teaches crime scene investigation. We did an episode about that. It's it's amazing, you know. I've interviewed professional voice actors. I've interviewed just people who are doing real freaking cool things, you know. Yeah. And it, it's amazing. Um, yeah, there's so many people here doing so many cool, unique things. A lot of people think that every time they see a foreigner, they're probably a teacher. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, I think the minority of the foreigners you're going to see in an average day are teachers. Yeah. I, I and and that's far more not to diminish teaching because i am a no, teacher no 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 <laughs> yeah Ooh, you know um that, that's far more true here in, in tokyo also like i see so many foreigners i'm like what do you do and then they say you know i'm a, I, like i'm i'm at, i'm actually yesterday it was super interesting on monday right uh i went to my language school to go and pick up my acceptance letter and um and uh, i met randomly walking down the street i met a, a guy who watches my videos hmm like uh, a big, I, love, I love it when that happens. That's it so was cool. so cool, um, and it's only only happened to me. I'm going to say five times in the year and a half I've been here, right? Okay. Um, which is, you know, it's still a big amount, really, um, because that often they're foreigners for one, so it means they've had to travel to Japan, and then it's just an off chance that I've met them, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I was just walking in Shibuya. I walked past Hachiko. Okay, obviously, yeah. extremely popular area, cool. and this you know a, a guy similar to my height, a little bit shorter, just stops me and he's like, "I watch your videos." Cool. And I was like, "Whoa, hey man, how's it going?" And he was a South African uh, chap, and uh, we ended up actually I didn't have any plans, so we ended up hanging out all day. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, and he was super nice, and um, and it, he was an investment banker. I've never met an investment banker before, but I met an investment banker. You know. Nice, like, nice. Uh, well, the, hey, in, for you, you uh, just Japan podcast listeners out there, if you're in Japan and you see a YouTuber, <clears throat> you know, don't be afraid. And, come up and say hi. Just, just come up and say hi. I love what people do that to me, and I always appreciate it. Sometimes, now I, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I see people look at me strangely in the supermarket or here and there, and I wonder, do they know who I am, or yeah. are they just kind of looking at me squirrely because I'm a <laughs> foreigner? Um, but I mean, I had a, I had a I had a case. Uh, uh, when was it? It was a few months ago. <clears throat> I was out shopping for my wife's birthday present, and uh, I was downtown in Kobe. And I said, "You know what? I got a few minutes, and I, I do a bit of geocaching as a hobby every once in a while." I'm like, "Oh, there's a geocache hidden around this area, the shopping area. I'm gonna go try to find it." And I had my geocaching app, and yeah. geocaching is like the the, the grown up treasure hunting, <laughs> and basically what it is. And uh, I knew it's hidden in this area near these vending machines. And I see this foreign couple standing in front of these vending machines. And I can see the man kind of trying to look around discreetly. He's feeling under the vending machine. And I'm like, I bet you these dudes are geocachers. And they're looking for the same geocache. And I walked up. And we had our, both had our geocaches, uh, geocaching apps open on our iPhones. Uh, right. And I just said, hey, are you guys looking for a geocache? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, that's, cool. And I, I mean, woke that's, up. that's crazy. But and the, the guy looked at me. He's like, Hey, uh, I watch your videos. No, he actually no. He didn't say it. He just said you're Kevin, right? I'm like, yeah. He was like, man, we watch your videos <laughs> from America, and now we're here teaching in Japan. We just got here. I'm like, that's amazing. Cool. That was so cool. That's that's awesome. And I just. Yeah, man, I just love it when stuff like that happens. So, like, uh, for those of you out there, you ever come to Japan and you see a J vlogger, you bump into one on the road, yeah, just go up and say hi. Definitely come up and say hi because I I had one person and I felt so bad for him um, because he tweeted me like two or three hours later. But uh, there, there was there was the twenty five years of Pokemon or something the the celebration. Okay. 
uh, and there was a big Pikachu cafe at the top of the the tallest tower in Roppongi. Okay. And um, and so me and my friends went, and I got a t- and I was having a great time. And I'm a generally I'm quite a loud person to say the least, but I was having a really good time. So I was laughing and and stuff. And we ordered quite a lot of food, so we were there quite a while. And uh, this guy tweets me two hours later. I get a tweet, and he was like, "Hey, um." I, I thought I saw you at the Pokemon ca- cafe, um, but I didn't say hi. Uh... And he was like, you look like you're having a good time, though. And I was like, dude, you should have come and said hi. That would have been amazing. It would have made like the best day yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. I've got a couple of those in the past, too, where people are like, I saw you across. A, where, hey, this afternoon, were you here? And I saw you in front of this coffee shop with a coffee in your hand. I'm like, yep, that was me. <laughs> Like oh, you should have so, come over and said hello. Yeah, it's so saddening. Like definitely anybody who who thinks, well, maybe they don't want to be seen. Like like don't don't think that. Come up, say hello, mm. and you know, shake our hands. We'll take a selfie. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Even like like I was with my wife and my kids one time, and I remember there was a, a, a Canadian girl who was he was doing the Akita Tom thing. She was a high school exchange student. She had her uniform nice. on, and she just walked up to us on the street, and she was like, oh, "You're Kevin. I watch your videos. Like I'm from Canada. I watch your videos before I came here." And my wife was my wife thought that was really cool. Actually, she was like, "Wow, that's really neat." Like. It's super nice. It's yeah. it's, it's not like, and a lot of I think a lot of people think that maybe we'll get like celebrityism where we're like, don't come up to me. I'm a, I, uh, I don't want to be seen by the public or whatever. It's not that. Absolutely. I like not. putting a I like putting a face to the numbers that we see on on YouTube. You know, or the or the comments. You know, or the comments. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's even like people like I've met here have been like I've never commented on your videos. I'm like, comment, talk to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm. But sorry, I, I've I've got a completely sidetracked there. I'm very sorry about that. Oh, but yeah, yeah options wise, um, basically, I just I um, I stopped after looking for an English teacher. But um, there were there, there were a lot of options, and I basically just went on Gaijin Pot like every day. Every day went on Gaijin Pot, and I was like, I was like, I will get a job. I will get a job. And I I actually wanted to to apply to Interac or Jet. Then I didn't. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I did a different route, which was uh, I came, I did the uh, come here and then look for a job while you're here. Yeah, I remember. That. I remember your videos when you first arrived. I was like, well, yeah. that takes some gonads to do that. It was. I don't recommend that to anybody. It was okay. very, very stressful. Try to find a job abroad and then come here. Okay. I would, or at least find like have an idea. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. I had a job before I came to Japan. I figured. Yeah, because also you you have to do the certificate of eligibility thing and. Yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun when you hear TikTok, um, TikTok, TikTok. So we yeah, down, right? Yeah, and they're not they're not very nice when you've got a, a temporary visa and you you want to change to a a full time work visa because they're like, you're not going to do that in this country. Okay, it's better to come here with sponsorship papers, basically. Basically, yeah, yeah, like have a job or at least have, you know, being being in the talks. Like, because you can come here and interview here. They might ask you to come and interview yeah. in Japan. Um, and but... then you can say that you've got that information. You're like, I'm coming here for an interview. I've been asked to come here for an interview by a company. Exactly. Yeah. Um, whereas what I did was I came here technically on a holiday and then was like, gadget pot, and then just like applied for as many jobs as humanly possible. Mm. It was not clever, but it, it, it worked. <laughs> it, wor- it worked eventually. So I'm, I'm curious. Okay. So now – uh, jump ahead. You're here in Japan now. You're yeah. working in Japan. Um, I know you're teaching. I'm not going to ask you too much about your job, actually. Mm-hmm. I know you're teaching. I'm curious. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of looking at time wise now, as as far as a, as as far as the podcast goes. Um, so what? Okay, I'm going to ask you. What do you enjoy the most about living here, and what challenges have you faced? So a bit of the positive, and maybe the not so positive. Oh God! With uh, with just being in Japan in general, just yeah, in general. Okay, so okay, uh, I'll get the negative out of the way first, <laughs> because uh, there's so much like I love about this country, but I won't. I obviously won't drag on for too long. We've been going for a while, but um, the main the main negative that I don't like one something that I really don't like is the expectation of greatness, even if you've are in an entry position okay uh which sounds really lazy on my part but that's not what i mean i don't mean that i don't want to work hard because i do what i mean is that japan has obviously the hardest work work ethic 
in the world. Like they're crazy when it comes to the way that they work. Um, and with my first job here, cause I actually have changed jobs since oh, but okay. with my first job, I wasn't trained at all. Mm -hmm. I arrived. I didn't have any training as an English teacher. I got a job and then my training was a three day seminar in which they just told me the ins and outs of being in a school in Japan, like an ALT, you know, the, you have to bow and be nice and, you know, don't swear and all that stuff. You know, the basic stuff, but ne no training, not none at all. No orientation. More like cultural training. Exactly. More, more not, 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 how to, not how to actually teach. Yeah. Like, it was really kind of awkward. And the expectation that you have to do everything perfectly your first time around was kind of shocking. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't say that like completely annoys me because it does it does force you to try your best at what you're doing. <laughs> but sorry, I, hit, I hiccup then. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, it does it does force that, but like there's that expectation, and also something that really like just grinds on me. And I'm gonna say this for all fat people. I'm not gonna put. I'm not gonna you know beat around the bush. I'm a big dude. Other big dudes who come here. Uh, it's very difficult to get clothes in my size. Mm, yeah, you hear that? I've, well, I've had I've had Molly on a few times. Uh, yeah, he's been on four or five times on the podcast, and yeah, he he's a man who has trouble as well. He has to get stuff uh, obviously ordered specifically or sent from the states. I mean, uh, luckily being in Tokyo, I don't have that problem. There are big and tall stores here. Okay, he he lives in Shizuoka, so yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I'm sure he doesn't want to drive up to Tokyo to get stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, there are big and tall stores here, but it's, it's you know, you've got to know where to go, whatever, which, by the way, if you do want to go to a big and tall store, that's Sakazen is the name of it. But, um, uh, no, like, it was just, and also, but the, the thing that gripes me the most is that uh, with being a big guy, Japanese people think it's okay to touch you just whenever. Well, they walk up and, like, poke you and stuff? Poke me, p pat my belly, pinch my cheeks. Ah, wow, okay. It, yeah, and it's very odd because it's super anti-Japanese, you know, it's really it's really personal and kind of, you know, it, it's like, hey, what are you doing? And they, they find it, you know, they find it funny or they find it, like, okay to do that. Like, mm. they think it's okay. And I personally, I'm like, I'm, I really don't like people getting in my personal space. Mm. And that was something that I had to just, in my head, because the first time it happened, I, like, exploded at the person, like, in a purely Mancunian way. And I, 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 I kind of look like a bit of a, 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 an ass, if I'm honest. Um, or a very bad person. Uh, and I kind of thought to myself, well, they probably didn't know that that was going to offend me as much as it did. Uh, and then in my head, I was kind of like, yeah, this, is, this sucks, but like, they're doing it, and I don't know how to communicate to stop it. Um, so I, I eventually just accepted it. But they, they will come up and they'll pat my belly and say, like, oh, you're a big dude. You must love food and stuff like that, you know? Mm. Um, which is kind of insulting in a way, but at the same time, I think it's just a cultural difference and something you just have to get over. Yeah, and 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 a level of ignorance on their part. They just exactly maybe don't know any better, you know. Yeah, they don't think, and and sometimes it'll be like big, it'll be like big Japanese people. I'm doing air quotes, but obviously you can't see me. Uh, okay. Uh, but like big Japanese guys will come up and like pat my belly and be like, "Whoa, you're a big guy," and I'm like, "Yeah," like in a kind of like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm, don't touch me again, please," kind of way. Um, and then they'll be like, no, I'm a big guy too. And then grab my hand and make me pat their belly. And, um, and then they'll be like, what kind of food do you like? And I, I think that sometimes they use it kind of as a way to like break the ice to, to talk to somebody, <laughs> um, mm. which is kind of weird, but I, I, yeah, that's one thing I don't like, okay. but things I love, um, things I love is how easy it is to just, you know, to just lock out the 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 fast pace and you can go to a temple and just sit and everything's really quiet mm. and it's very spiritual very true very true yeah and i love parks tokyo has an abundance of amazing parks um and also like i teach kids so i love i love the the smile you know smiles on their faces and being able to hear them laugh and giggle and you know i think it's amazing to hear english and 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 stuff like that like it's all these little things that make for a great day basically nice nice
Um, and then on top of that, like the the ingrained hit, ingrained tradition in everyday life here. Hmm. <clears throat> I really like like there's there's respect in everything, you know. Um, true. True. <laughs> I say this directly after saying that people come and pat my belly and stuff. <laughs> uh, but no, there's there is respect to you know you treat your boss with respect. You treat your you know the, you treat people on the streets with respect. If you bump into them, you say sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and they, if you come up to the street lights, if they're red, you don't walk. You stand still. You wait. And yeah, they then, don't know. There's no jaywalking. Yeah, and it's it's all these little things like that, that that used to all these things that don't happen in Manchester that would annoy me. Like if someone bumps into you, they'd be like, oh, what are you doing? You know? Um, and it's, it, it's like a flipped effect of what England's like, which sounds awful, but um, mm. it's, it's weird. It's, it's all these little tiny things that amount to one huge good thing, I think. Cool, cool. Now I'm curious, do you have any, do you have any long-term plans for life in Japan? Do you think you're going to stick it out long-term here? Um, yeah. Yeah. But do I think, ah, that's a difficult question, Kevin. No, I know you've only been here for a year and a half, so you, well, uh, yeah, but obviously, like, I you know you do meet some people who are like, I'm gonna stay here forever, and uh, there, there and are people, some people who have just you know, dead set, and, and other people are like, Well, like in my case, I mean, I, I, I'm not planning on staying here forever. Yeah. Um, if, if, if it did happen, it happens, but that's right. not my plan. Well, my plan is kind of. It's kind of changed a little bit at the moment because obviously like going to language school, yeah. I know for a fact for the long term, like there's definitely going to be two years at the, at the language school. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and then after that, you know, uh, question mark, I, question mark, but because when, no, when, I, I guess once you get those, once, once your language skills improve a lot, yeah, there may be more interesting options that are going to open up for you. Exactly. Um, but I definitely want to try and stay here. The, the thing that I've always said when people are like, are you going to stay here forever? The thing I say is, I'm going to stay here as long as I want to. Mm. Because the moment I start getting like crotchety and bored and you know angry at being in Japan or whatever. Or, Time you know, to get just, out, man. Time to get out. Yeah, just get because out. Because you meet those crotchety foreigners here. I do. Oh, God, I've met You so meet many. a lot of those crotchety foreigners who just like hate it here. It's like, why are you still here then? Yeah, it's like, go back to your country. If you don't like being here, then you don't have to be here. Like, unless, I guess, unless they're married and they're kind of stuck here. But, yeah. Um, well, I mean, you, you meet people who maybe have, like, you know, they're married, they have children, they have a house, they have all these yeah. kind of things that kind of kind of make it more complicated. But But I've met plenty of single foreigners who are like, I've been here for 12 years and I've freaking hate this place yeah like, uh, okay uh, that makes no sense to me then <laughs> like, I, mean, I, met a, I met a guy who worked in disneyland tokyo a foreign guy and he'd lived here for 11 years and he's he said to me like how long are you planning to stay and i was like as long as i want and he was like oh you won't be talking like that in a year you'll be wanting to get out i did and i'm like well why are you still here then <laughs> like, what's your problem but um no i, I mean i want to stay here as long as i as i want to and uh, right now it's it's for the foreseeable future that's a good answer yeah, makes sense. Um, so, just to kind of wrap things up. Um, Sorry that I've made this a longer, long. No, no, no problem, no problem at all. Like again, I think a lot of the listeners. I hey, I'm a fan of the long, the long form podcast. That's why I've developed a long form podcast. Um, I, I've been listening to I listen to podcasts more and more nowadays, like because yeah. of trains. I well, just this uh, this this episode. I've actually, uh, you know, th we're gonna have a a, a mailbag section. This now this this episode might be pushing this this episode will be pushing an hour and a half, which is great nice. because a That's, lot of people a lot of people like that because they have long commutes. Exactly, people, and I, people you tell don't me, need to listen to a podcast all at once. You yeah, can exactly. It. I listen to a lot of long form, and I it, it, it's it, maybe it takes me a few days to listen to it, but that's great. Exactly. Um, I've had some people who are like Kevin. I love your podcast because I go for walks at night and I listen to it. I listen to it in the morning when I walk my dog. I do this and that. I'm like, sweet. That's awesome. Um. So okay. So to kind of wrap things up. Yeah. For for those people out there, the Just Japan podcast listeners, who, you know, they're living in various countries around the world, they want to come to Japan. What they want to come here to live, right? What kind of you know? Obviously, everyone's in a different situation. Yeah. Education wise, language wise, obviously. but maybe you know, for those for those people who are kind of in similar situations to yourself and mine, mm -hmm. they speak English. Maybe they're qualified to teach. 
Okay. What what kind of advice would you give to people? Or maybe not. Maybe they're the future Akita Toms out there or Michaelis. What okay. advice would you give to people about coming to Japan? Okay. Um, right. So my number one piece of advice after doing it myself and realizing the the mistakes I made and thinking to myself, wow, I really wish I'd done this. I really wish I'd done this. I really wish I'd done this. One, so if you want to come to Japan – and that's what you're dead set on doing. Save up a lot of money. Hmm. Like, uh, and, and there advice. are some people who aren't in, you know, the financial situation to be able to do so. And that's fine. But if you can, save up a lot of money. Because even if you get hired by Interact or Jet from abroad, or whoever you get hired by, you're still not going to get paid for two months when you arrive. Because you'll need to set up a bank account, you'll need to do this, this, then this, and it, it's all a long process. And there's a lot of initial startup fees that you have to pay for. Yeah, it's very true. Like rent and key money and all of this nonsense and paying for the deposit on your phone and oh, it's 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 a big I, ask of I money. Prob- and, I probably came to Japan with about six grand in my pocket. Yeah, and it I came, all. Well, I came about I think, with pounds. Okay, I think by the t- by the time I got my first paycheck, it was all gone. Yeah, was I, like, I, <laughs> I was I was down to my last. I was literally before my first paycheck. I was down to my last three thousand yen note. Mm. Like I had, I had one thousand yen three times over, and that was to you know. And I was like, I have to make this last for five days. I was going to say, what, you had a 3,000 yen note? I haven't seen one. It would be crazy. No, uh, yeah, no, I was was down to 3,000 yen, and I was like, I have to make this last for five days. Uh, And I was commuting, you know, Um, and uh, it was was hard. I I wish I brought more money. Like, even even still, like, I brought a lot of money, and I wish I brought more. Um, So that's the first bit of advice is bring bring a substantial amount of money if you can. Sell some stuff. You're not going if you if you're planning to live here, like sell some stuff in, in America. You know, if you if you live in America, you don't need it. If you got a car, sell your car. Um, mm, true. Which sounds really like abrupt, but like if you're not going to be in America for two years, what do you need a car for? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, another another point. If you don't speak any Japanese, and a lot of people say like you don't need Japanese to live in Japan. Uh, this is true. You don't. And there is no, there's no reason for you to do this, but I would recommend, even if you're over any age, is to become a student first and learn Japanese in some sense. Mm. Um, and you may not agree with this, Kevin, but in my experience now, having to, like even today, dealing with Tokyo Immigration Service, the immigration service, even they don't speak good English. No, they don't. And it's horrendously aggravating to go into a place, a government building, where for one, they already treat you like, a, as you know, bad because they're like, "Oh, you're a foreigner and you're trying to take our money." Blah 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 blah, which is awful for an immigration place to feel like. But you know, it's even more. It's even more aggravating when you know you go up to the counter and then they start reeling off in Japanese and you're like I don't speak Japanese or at least not to this level and then you say that to them and then they have to go well please sit down and wait an extra 45 minutes for our one English speaker to come okay well I haven't had that personal experience in the immigration and office and explain in what is happening in uh, Badage yeah you know I haven't had quite that but, but I think I know what you're getting at basically um and and I do agree that if you don't have the language, it can be tough. Yeah. You can get by. You can get by. You but can I... get by by learning phrases, by learning certain things. Yeah. But I've been in many situations where my Japanese isn't so good mm-hmm. that where I can't get things done. And, I, I mean, luckily I have a Japanese spouse and I rely on her a lot to help me. But there's a lot of times that I'm not with her. Exactly. And uh, life can be tough if you it, don't it have. It can. And it, if, can be, it can be quite defeating as well. Like. Mm. Like, uh, you feel school, like an infant. Yeah, and the school, the first school I taught at in Saitama, that they didn't ha- that like there was only the the three English teachers, right, who spoke English, and they probably didn't speak English so well either. Uh, no, only one of them really spoke English very well, 
uh, and the other two were actually history teachers who just taught English <laughs> on the side. Um, and, uh, and and I couldn't communicate with anybody in the school, and I felt super lonely because well, I, yeah, I couldn't for, speak to anyone. For, for me, that was a great. Um, I I did spend a year teaching last year. Actually, I spent as a ALT. I was a direct hire yeah. ALT, and uh, that was a great experience for me to improve my Japanese. Yeah. And now that I've gone back into a completely English bubble, <laughs> yet again, what I wasn't before, all that Japanese has disappeared again. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. I live but, in an English bubble within Japan. So I love it. I, I, I'm in the same, like once I get home, the English bubble appears. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I would recommend people come and, you know, try, try and be a student or at the very least try and learn some Japanese first. Very key. That's very, I used to give that advice to people like when I was a teacher in Korea, living in yeah. Korea. You want to go to to learn some Korean. You got to learn. You just have to learn some. Yeah, just learn some. Even just like good morning. Well, how to count. How to count money. How to count money. How to ask for, you know. Like, how to ask for goods. Yeah. Goods and services. Goods and services. And then Le like, Learn your directions. Learn how to get into a taxi and be able to tell them where you need to go. Yeah. And, and these you, are all really simple phrases. Yeah. Learn. And if, if you don't know where to go, at least be able to learn how to say, like, go straight, turn left here, turn right or, there. Or, like, where is this? Like, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. There's all of these things. Survival Japanese. Survival. survival Japanese. There's even a book that I'm reading called Survival Japanese. Like, pick it up. It's pretty cheap. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's that's the, the next thing. And then, and then the final thing would be don't settle. And that's a weird one. But just because a job seems like a good English teaching job, there are a lot of bad companies out here. Mm, very um, true. Very true. That very bad ALT companies, for example, um, mm -hmm. that will mess you about and they will not pay you or they will, um, they, you know, they will, they, they will, they will, and they hire anybody. That's the, you know, that's the thing that they just hire anybody and there is no real interview to it. It's like uh, they call you on Skype and say, what's your name, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, okay, we've got a job for you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. And I would say do your research about every company that you apply to, but also don't settle for a company just because they're the only one who gave you a, a, a job, you know? Like, I was, <clears throat> I searched for the best part of a year before I even got here to find out what companies I wanted to apply for, you know? Okay. But um, the, the, don't settle. Um, and then just, and at the, the very least, make sure that when you're here, that you are enjoying every single day, which sounds really cheesy, but oh, I, that's I, good advice. It's good advice. It's true. Enjoy, enjoy your time here. Yeah, I don't want you to believe that you know, because a lot of people come here and then I hear like really, really sad stories of like they want to go home after six months, and that's the honeymoon period. You know, the six months is where you're like, oh my god, Japan, and then it's like, I'm working. <laughs> Oh. Um, and then they, they this honeymoon period find like kind of wears away. But um, I would say just like every weekend, try and take a trip somewhere and enjoy yourself. You know? Yeah, very true, very true. And that's 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 kind of all my advice for for new people. Like I, that's what I do. You know, I just try and keep myself as happy as possible every day. And um, there was a lot of mistakes I made. Just do your research. Have a lot of money. Uh, try and make some friends before you come out here. Like one of the best things I did was make friends with the YouTube community and then go to the Hanami, you know? Once you arrived, people knew who you were, right? Yeah. The the first thing I did was I went to the Tokyo, um, the, the Tokyo, uh, what's it called? The YouTube meetup in mm -hmm. Tokyo mm -hmm. um, and the Hanami. Those were the two things I did when I first got here. Nice. Uh, and uh, I, I, I made loads of friends that way. Yeah, you know? cool. And, and that's that's what I would say. Make some friends before you get here, and then you have someone to to have a little conversation with, or go for a drink with, if if you need it or whatever. And mm -hmm. that, that that's always going to be good. That's what I would say. Great. Now, Josh, I'm curious if people want to find you online, they want to check out your YouTube channel, where you yeah. are on Facebook or Twitter, wherever it may be. How can they find you? Throw out the links, man. It's time to throw pick, out the links. Okay, here we out. go. This is super easy for you guys. I always keep it simple. It's J Hill Life. It's J. H I L L L, you know, J Hill Life, you know, okay. uh, that's youtube.com slash J Hill Life, twitter.com slash J Hill Life, uh, then Facebook, it's J Hill Life YT for YouTube. Okay. 
Uh, I have a Tumblr, which is uh, thisisjhilllife.tumblr.com. Uh, and I even have a blog, which I post to sometimes, mm -hmm. called The Journey to Japan, which is what this podcast this is called. This episode is called The Journey to Japan. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, Coincidence. So Exactly. So you can even go there and read some of my ramblings. And it, actually, that's probably a good place to go if you want to see what it was like for me trying to figure out how to get to Japan. Because there's some blog posts on there about me like struggling to find you know jobs or whatever and uh, listing you know companies that I, I'd researched were bad and all sorts of stuff. So if you want to go on there, you can do. Awesome. Well, well, Josh, thanks so much for joining us in the uh, Just Japan podcast this well, evening. Thank you very much for having me, Kevin. All right, awesome. And for all of you out there, remember that you heard those links. Those will all be in the show notes at BusanKevin.com. Go to BusanKevin.com under episode 43 of the Just Japan podcast. And all the links that Josh just mentioned will be right there. Okay, well, again, thanks. No problem. Thank you very much. Please hang up and try again. So, folks, I wanted to do a little mailbag section in this week's episode of the Just Japan podcast because there were a lot of questions I received for last week's podcast that I, I didn't have a chance to get to and talk uh, talk about. Um, so I'm going to start off with a question from Everett, and Everett's in Canada, and he wanted to know, he, well, he wrote, I would love to hear about open mic nights in Japan. I'd love to come over and play while I'm there. I'm also curious to know about thrift stores in Japan. I collect tour shirts, and most of what I buy comes from Value Village and other thrift stores. Is there equivalent an equivalent in Japan? Well, first of all, Everett, um, thanks for taking the time to um, leave the questions. And actually, Everett's an old friend of mine from university, from my days, my undergraduate days in, in, in university. We were friends. We used to hang out together uh, quite a bit, and it, it, it's really great that um, you're listening to the podcast, and this, uh, that's really awesome. Makes That really makes me happy, Everett, so cheers. It's great that we've kind of reconnected many years later. Um, so Everett wants to know about open mic nights. You know what? You know, in Korea, I knew a lot about that. I played a lot of open mic nights in Korea when I lived in Korea, and I was actually, my last year or so in Korea, I actually was in the house band at a kind of a foreigner bar, that, and every Wednesday night we hosted an open mic night. Um, the lead singer of the band, his name was Mike, and it was called Open Mic with Mike. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, they, I'm, I, I'm, I know they do the same here in Japan. Uh, I work with a few guys who are musicians, and they gig they gig, and they, they play at open mics. Um, I would think what you would want to do, if, if, if you're coming here to live in Japan and you're a musician, so if it's kind of a, uh, you're living in a city. If you're living in the rural areas, you're probably going to be completely out of luck, <laughs> uh, definitely, because you're going to have to live in a in a population that's big enough to probably support kind of a a foreigner bar, uh, a bar that has a large expat clientele. Um, and then you know it's a matter of you know you move to a city like Kobe, like Osaka, like Tokyo. And you, you kind of you find out some of these foreigner bars. You go there, you're going to see, uh, guaranteed on the weekends, you'll see some foreign musicians talking. Just don't be shy. you got to get up and talk to them. you got to get up and communicate with those foreign musicians. Say, hey, you know, hey, I'm a musician as well. Um, are there places where there's open mics? You know, I'm a guitar player, I'm a drummer, I'm a bass player, whatever it may be. Ba if you're a bass player, oh, boy, everyone will be pounced on you left and right because we all know that bass players are hard to come by. Um there are guitar players who play bass, and then there are true bass players. And a true bass player, wow. Uh, drummers are often a hot commodity, too, from my ex previous experience. So, you know, now, you know, yeah, so even if you're just, like, in a smaller city and you, you, you find out where the, the local gaijin bar is, the foreigner bar, and then, again, on the weekends, if there's some, some musicians playing, get up and talk to them. Don't be shy. Walk up and say, "Hey guys, what's going on? I'm new here. I'm a I'm a guitar player. I'm a singer. I'm a, you know whatever it may be. I'm, I'm you know I'm interested in playing too. Is there a way I can play? And uh, you know you're you probably you'll probably find out. You know um, there's also different Facebook groups around where you can find out some things. Now, if you're planning to just travel here and you would like to play, I would say um, what you need to do is do some research in advance. Mm. I know that um, Gaijinpot, for example, gaijinpot.com, 
that's kind of like the big foreign uh, job searching site, but they bran- they've branched out and do a lot of other things. They have a uh, Facebook page, which is quite popular. You know, you can post a message on there, say, hey, I'm coming to Japan. I'm going to be going to, you know, be very specific about which city you want to go to. I'd like to play at a, you know, I'm going to, I'm coming to Osaka. Uh, I'm a guitar player. Or I'm a drummer or whatever. Are there any open mics? Can anyone help me out? And, you know, maybe some people can help you. Help you. Um, yeah. Or Everett, in the case, you know, with you, I know you. If if I'm still here in Japan, whenever you're planning on coming here, let me know in advance and I'll, I'll do some research for you. Um, now, about thrift stores, yeah, there are indeed thrift stores, but they're not as common as you would find in, in Canada or America. Um, and there's really a couple of kinds. Now, the thrift stores I've seen, they don't have secondhand Japanese clothes. They tend to have secondhand foreign clothes. They tend to import secondhand clothes from Europe, from North America. Now, my wife was telling me, I asked, I asked my wife about this, and she said that her and her sister, when they were younger, used to come and they, they lived in Osaka, and they would come and travel here to Kobe to a very fashionable, cool, hip, trendy, hipster-type area called Motomachi. And there were a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there were some uh, thr- import thrift stores. And we'll, I'll, I'm using air quotes when I say thrift um, because the clothes are actually quite expensive, um, and, you know, fashionable and cool, you know, it's uh, cool and hip to wear the foreign clothes. Now, a few years back, just maybe three years ago, one of my coworkers came to work one day and was like, Hey man, check out this shirt. I just got this for three bucks. And it was, you know, a pretty cool shirt. And I'm like, what, where the heck did you get that? He's like, yeah, there's an, imp- there's a thrift shop, like a couple of blocks down. And I went to the shop and everything was 300 yen. That's about three bucks. Um, well, the Canadian dollar now, that's probably about 20 bucks Canadian. But at the time, it was about 3 bucks Canadian. And it was great. It reminded me of like a miniature version of Value Village in Canada. It was a great thrift shop. And I bought a bunch of clothes there. And uh, sadly, uh, within a, f- a few months of me discovering the place, or being introduced to the place, I should say, it closed down. Yeah. So the places are around. They're not so common. And they tend to be in more fashionable areas, and they tend to be expensive. Um, yeah, and again, it's it's not Japanese clothes. It's Western clothes. Japanese people don't tend to want to buy secondhand Japanese clothes. There's a cachet to buying the foreign stuff. So there you go, Everett. Um, hope that helps. And yeah, there you go. Now, one more question in the mailbag section. It, it, it's kind of a big one, so I'm just going to kind of touch on it and give my two cents because that's all I can really do. Uh, but Devin asked, uh, this is from the Facebook page, the uh, Just Japan Podcast Facebook page, which you, you should all go over and like if you want to be part of this uh, community, a really active part of the community because that's I really go to the Facebook page to get um, the input from, from you awesome folks out there. Um, it's kind of like the really great... You know, the the BusanKevin.com is kind of where I archive all of the podcasts and things. But the Facebook page, um, the link is on BusanKevin.com. That's where I go and uh, that's that's where I interact with people. Um, so if you want to really ask questions and get in contact with me, uh, the best thing to do is go over there and like it because I'm, I'm there all the time. <coughs> so Devin asked me, um, is mental illness as big in Japan or different than in North America? Well, I think I know what you mean by this. Um, of course, mental illness in Japan is, is just as big of a problem as it is in North America. Are there more instances of it? Um, I don't know. I It's not something I study. I don't study the, the statistics. Um, over the years, my friends and coworkers and I have, have, have discussed it. The first thing is, is that there is a very huge taboo about mental illness in Japan, in Asia in general. Now, of course, there's a bit of a taboo about it for some people in, in Canada and America as well, but more so in Asia, where um, it's a, a, it tends to be, uh, in uh, at least in Northeast Asia, a very, um, the culture, it's a culture of, being one, not being different than the other, um, a group culture. You don't want to be seen as being different in any way. So obviously, if, if you have a child who has a mental illness, that child is different. So if you're a parent, it's embarrassing, it's humiliating, um, not for all, but for many. Uh, and it, it's something that's not talked about. And because of this kind of taboo, there's not a lot of 
options out there for people who do have mental illness to seek help. It's hard to be diagnosed and it's hard to seek treatment. Um, so whereas in, for example, it takes a case of like something like schizophrenia maybe. Um, I'm sure there's just as many people in Japan suffering, like statistically just the same percentage of people uh, suffering from schizophrenia as maybe like in America or Canada. But the difference is, is that in Canada or America, those people can very easily get medical assistance. Well, in Canada anyway, um, because of the, the Medicare system, and, and, and get medicated. You seek help and get medication. Now, you, if you spend any amount of time in Japan, you're like, oh my gosh, there's crazy people all over the place. And it really seems that way. And I think there's a couple of reasons why it seems like there's crazy people all over the place. First of all, I think that if you're living in Japan and you're taking the train every day and you're living in a big city and commuting, you have more people contact. You have more contact with people than you would if you're from, say, Canada or many parts of America. You know, when I, when I lived in Canada, I wasn't commuting every day via public transportation. I wasn't getting on a bus. I wasn't getting on a subway. I wasn't getting on a train. I was getting in a car and driving back and forth. So I'd get in the car and it's just me in the car or a coworker going from home to work. So I'm not encountering many people. But when you're on a crowded train every day, you're in a crowded subway station every day, you're in a crowded bus every day, you're seeing a lot of different people. Some normal, some not normal. Some who have issues, some who don't have issues. So I think be just the, the, because of the fact that it's such a densely populated area, you have more contact with people, you're seeing a lot more people. So it's kind of just a, a, a numbers game, a percentage game. <clears throat> so um, maybe there's the same percentage of people who have um, visible mental issues, but you're just seeing them more in a case like, you know, if you're living in Japan. But also, a lot of the people <clears throat> that you see around, they don't have uh, access to treatment. Uh, psychologists and, and psychotherapists and psychiatrists are not very common in Japan. Uh, child psychologists are very rare. If you have a child who has a learning disability or a behavioral issue, it's, it's actually it's quite an uphill battle to try to get them even diagnosed. Um, <clears throat> so... The, the tools aren't there, and the means aren't there in many cases. And, <clears throat> of course, there's also some different social issues. I mean, there's a lot of social issues with regards to work and education. You know, people in Japan, you know, may, maybe there are higher numbers of people who, it might not be me mental illness. Well, no, you know, we have depression, of course. I think maybe depression might be higher just because of uh, the kind of societal pressure that we don't have in a country like Canada to be the same, to achieve certain things. Um, we're not, you know, in Canada, Canada is not a test-driven society like Japan. Um, so um, maybe in the case of depression, and I, I don't know, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm honestly just kind of, this is very anecdotal what I'm saying, but, um, you know, there's a lot of people who commit suicide every day by train, people who just jump off the platform into the train that's pulling to the station. It's, it's quite common, uh, here in Japan. And, uh, maybe those numbers wouldn't be so great in other countries. I don't know. <clears throat> you know, Japan tends to have a very high suicide rate. And again, there's a million reasons why a lot of combination of factors, societal, uh, governmental, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, uh, Devin, uh, mental illness is a big issue here in Japan, and it, it is treated very differently than in America or maybe Europe or Canada. Um, a lot of that's cultural. Um, but yeah, so it, it's a very serious thing. It's something that's in the media a lot. You hear a lot of, you'll read a lot of stories about it when you're here. Um, it's very serious, very, you know, obviously a downer of, of a topic. And I, I hope in years to come things will change and people have more access to doctors. And I, I hope there will be more people to help those with mental issues. Um, because it is a problem, a very big problem here in Japan. And uh, yeah, so there you go, Devin. I hope that helps in some way. And uh, I'm going to use that question to kind of wrap up the mailbag section of this week's podcast. Now, remember, guys... There's a lot you can do to support the Just Japan podcast out there. Now, of course, if, 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 if you can, you can always support us over on Patreon.com. That link is in the show notes at BusanKevin.com. 
Um, you know, anything helps. It helps with the server costs. It helps with just making things easier because it's it's not easy to always get this show up for you guys. Um, <clears throat> but you can just support the show by subscribing on iTunes, by subscribing on Stitcher. And you know what really helps, guys? If, if you are already subscribed on Stitcher or on iTunes, take the time to leave a rating, okay? And write a review. You write a review for the Just Japan podcast on iTunes. It helps. It helps get noticed. It, you know, maybe we'll get spotlighted or picked up. Um, you know, we'll get more listeners and some traction will happen. You know, because that, that, that would be awesome. Um, the same goes for Stitcher. Um, leave a rating, leave a review, a positive one, hopefully. <laughs> um, you know, and, and that helps. It helps us get noticed. Also, you can share the Just Japan podcast in your social media. If you like the show, if, if it's interesting to you, or you think you have friends out there who would be interested in it, share them with them. Email them the link. Um, you know, tweet tweet out the links. Uh you know, post it on your Facebook. That's always a very effective way. Hey, if you're a Japanese language student somewhere in like the UK or Canada or the US, share this podcast with your classmates. Share it with your instructor. If they're interested in Japan, um, I'm sure there's some episodes of this podcast, you know, considering every week it's a very different topic that would be of interest to them as well. Um, I've done an episode with an exchange student who's living here in Japan. So, you know, um, there will be upcoming episodes about studying Japanese language from some people who our experts on the topic. Um, yeah, so those are some ways you can definitely help. Uh, like a call to arms. You can you like the show, support it just by sharing it, spreading spreading the word. And uh, yeah, and that will always help. Uh, I definitely appreciate it very much. So uh, that's it for this week, everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Just Japan podcast fans, listeners out there, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to download this week's episode for taking the time to sit down and listen uh, and for sharing it with your friends and your family and your coworkers and random strangers on the street and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'll be back again next week with another episode, episode number 44 of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Blah, 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 blah. I got tongue tied there. Everything you want to know about Japan. So um, I hope you're all doing well, wherever you may be. Take care, and I'll be talking to you next week.